Are you dreaming of visiting Switzerland? Planning a trip to Switzerland is very exciting, but it can also be overwhelming. How do you choose which of the many scenic cities, towns and villages to visit? Which mountaintop excursions should you take? And what's the best way to get around Switzerland? And of course, how much of the country can you realistically see within your time frame? If you've asked yourself any of these questions, this is the podcast for you. This is the Holidays to Switzerland travel podcast, and in each episode, your host Carolyn Schonefinger chats with Swiss travel experts to answer your most commonly asked questions, provide practical tips, and take you on a virtual visit to the most popular destinations, and of course some hidden gems, to help you plan your dream trip to Switzerland. And you'll hear plenty of conversations about Swiss cheese and chocolate too. Are you ready to plan your trip to Switzerland? Well, let's get started. Hello and welcome to episode 93 of the Holidays to Switzerland podcast. I'm your host, Carolyn, and I'm thrilled to have your company today. Is the Berner Oberland and the famous Jungfrau region one of the destinations you're planning to visit in Switzerland? For many of you, my guess is that your answer is a resounding yes. And let me just say, you're going to love it. One of the things I love so much about the region is the huge array of mountain excursions that you can enjoy. But that also creates its own problem. How do you decide which ones, or which one if you're short on time, to do? Today's guest is here to tell us all about one of the region's most popular mountains to visit, the Schilthorn, which you can reach from Lauterbrunnen, just 25 minutes from Interlaken. I've known Alan Ramsey for over 10 years, and his enthusiasm for the Schilthorn is contagious. In fact, it was Alan who convinced me about five years ago to push through my fear of heights and take the cable car ride up to the Schilthorn summit. I'm so glad he did. I was absolutely blown away by the views from the top. At 2,970 metres, or around 9,700 feet above sea level, the scenes from up there are just incredible. And I've since visited the Schilthorn on numerous occasions. I'll let Alan tell you about all the fantastic reasons to visit the Schilthorn and about the exciting new project that's currently taking place. Hello, Alan. Welcome back to the podcast and thank you for joining us again. It's been quite a while since you were last on the show. For those listeners who don't know you and and don't know uh, what you do, could you please introduce yourself and tell us a bit about your role? Sure. Uh, Thank you for inviting me back, Caroline. My name is Ramsey, Alan Ramsey, and I represent the Shilton Pete's Gloria which is a cable car ride in Switzerland, takes you from the Valley of the Waterfalls, the Lauterbrunn Valley, up to the peak of the Schilthorn Mountain and the Bernese Oberland in Switzerland. Fantastic. It's such a wonderful part of Switzerland. Um, and I know that you love your your role promoting the Schilthorn. We chatted about it in quite a lot of detail way back in Episode 7, uh, but for those listeners who perhaps don't know so much about the Schilthorn, what are some of the highlights that they can see when, when they visit this mountain? Well, it's very relevant that you chose me for uh, episode seven because the Schilthorn beats glory is the 007 mountain because that's where they filmed on Her Majesty's Secret Service. So the, the highlights actually start on the journey up to the Schilthorn because you travel along the Valley of the Waterfalls, the Lauterbrunnen Valley, for about five kilometres from Lauterbrunnen to Stechelberg. From there, when you've got your ticket, then you get in the cable car that takes you past the highest waterfall in Switzerland, the Murnbach, which is 411 metres high. Then you go to Gimmelwald, a very small village, to change cable cars, which has only got a population of about 100 the cable car then takes you up to the village of Murren, which has got four times the size of Kimmelwald with about 400 inhabitants, but both of these villages are car-free, both wonderful to walk around and check out what's going on and give you wonderful views. From Murren, you take the largest or the longest part of the journey, which is the cable car from Murren to Berg. It's over a kilometre in altitude and takes you up to the Berg station, 
there the highlights are the Skyline Walk, which is a, a metal platform sticking out over the cliff with about 120 meter drop. And the floor is see-through, so it, it can get the adrenaline going. At the back of the terrace where the Skyline Walk is, you can walk down some steps and walk along the Thrill Walk, which is 200 metres long, and gives you some thrills all the way along with a tightrope, a glass panel, a tunnel to crawl through, and that kind of thing. And then you come back up to the Berg, and from Berg you then go up to the Schultern, which is just a 300 metre climb, but it takes you to the peak of the Schultern and sitting on the peak, the summit building, at the top of that we have Pete's Gloria 360 degrees revolving restaurant uh, at the top of the building and in the lower part of that building there's a takeaway area you can go out the terrace have a look around and catch 200 alpine peaks on a good day you'll see as far as Mont Blanc in France and the Black Forest in Germany the floor below has got the world famous toilets because they're also James Bond themed through the toilets uh, and we also have the Spy World, which is a multimedia interactive exhibition all about the James Bond film on our Majesty Secret Service, which is particularly apt for all of the Australians because it's the Australian actor George Leesonby who stars as James Bond in that film. One of the highlights, or for me, the biggest highlight has to be the view. Um, you didn't mention there the Swiss skyline as it's, as it's named. I mean, you, you said you can see so all those those mountain peaks, but I think when you stand either at, at Berg or uh, on the terrace at the Schiltorn at the summit, the views of the Eiger, Monk and Jungfrau are, are just amazing if, if you're lucky enough to, to get good weather. Exactly. I mean, I, I've, people will be able to tell by my accent that I'm not a true Swiss. I was born and brought up in Scotland uh, and came here for a winter season. It's been a very long winter season. It's been uh, 33 years now. 34? No, 34 years now. And every time I go up there, I enjoy the view. And it doesn't matter what's going on. It's always different. Yeah. And I don't think I've ever seen the same thing twice in 34 years. It's amazing. Now, also speaking of James Bond, because I know there are a lot of James Bond themed activities and things at the Shilton, Um, and you mentioned the revolving restaurant there. Last year when I was there, we, you and I actually did a bit of filming about this new project, which we're going to talk about shortly. You um, invited me to the, uh, enjoy a James Bond brunch in the revolving restaurant. Could you tell um, everyone more about that? Because that really is a, a, one of the highlights, I think, or it's an experience that's not to be missed. Yeah, if you're going to go on the Shiltorn and you're there between 8 in the morning and 2 in the afternoon, then the, the James Bond brunch is a great thing to uh, experience. Uh, as I said, it starts at 8 o'clock, 8 till 11, it's more breakfast, but there's a, a very large buffet and for 37 Swiss francs, you get different fruit juices, teas, coffees, hot chocolates, over martin, et cetera, unlimited amounts, Prosecco, unlimited amounts of Prosecco, so that's all the drinks, water is also included. And then you get um, fresh fruit salad, yogurts, bircher muesli. You get different kinds of breads. Uh, 8 till 11, you'll get scrambled eggs, sausage, bacon, all sorts of different things. There's another section with smoked salmon and terrines. And then at 11 o'clock, we switch over to more of a lunchtime menu, so you'll get some meats on there. You get different kinds of pasta, different sauces. There's a salad buffet that replaces the yogurts and mueslis and that kind of thing. So you've got plenty to eat. If you come around just before 11 or half past 10, then you can... You can enjoy the whole thing all the way through as well, a bit of breakfast and a bit of lunch. So it's excellent value for money. And you get a table reservation, which you can make yourself online. We ask you to always turn up on time if possible or let us know if you're running late. But the table reservation is an hour and a half and the restaurant takes 45 minutes to make a complete revolution. So you'll get a couple of rounds during your James Bond brunch. Certainly uh, something that you've got to experience, I think, just sitting there enjoying that beautiful food and, and watching the amazing scenery just glide past you as as the restaurant revolves. Mm-hmm. Now, we uh, I briefly mentioned there the new project 
um, and I know that's been going on for a little while now, but it's or well, part of it actually is coming um, near to completion. So could you tell everyone about this big project that um, Shilton has undertaken? Sure. The, we called it the Shilton Van 20XX project because uh, my boss was involved in a project previously with another company and they kept having to extend the dates when it was going to be finished. So he decided he's not going to put a finishing date in because it just puts all the pressure on and the things don't go according to plan, then it's you've got to keep explaining why it's running late. So it was just before it was before COVID, then they decided that the the cable car, the system and the foundations of a lot of it are over 50 years old. And do you renovate everything or do you just replace it? And the decision was made if you if we replace it, then it should last another fifty years. And if you just renovate it, you don't you're not sure how long it's gonna last. So so they went for the big budget and it's now standing around 110 million Swiss francs. And it's building a brand new cableway system from the valley floor. But this time we're going to go straight directly up to Murren and then replacing the cable cars going between Murdenberg and Berg and Schilton. So it's going to have three stages to go up rather than the four before, which makes it faster, more efficient, eh, but also provides more comfort for the guests with brand new cable cars. So the first section from Stechelberg and the Lauterbrunnen Valley going direct to Murden, that will finish on an open on the 13th of December 2024. So this will be our Christmas present for 2024 as a brand new cableway. It's a pendulum, which means that they're both connected. So they're, when one goes up, the other one comes down, which also helps efficiency-wise, uh, energy-wise. And these cable cars will take 85 people per cable car. Stechelberg to Gimmelwald to Murren will carry on functioning as it has done. Okay. Uh, because otherwise we would put the people, the 100 people living in Gimmelwald in a very sticky situation. It would be a long walk to to get up and down because they'd have to go up to Murden and walk down or walk up to Murden and come down. So that one still goes. But that's the there'll be a new station also in the valley. And the amazing thing about the station is, as I point out when people look at the pictures, is there's no doors where the cable cars come out because they come directly out of the roof. Yeah. So basically, the cable car will come down through the roof and arrive at the station uh, next to the platform where where the guests will get in. It also has an automated luggage system. So if you arrive on a bus, you'll be outside the, wind, the door of the ticket office. You'll take your suitcase from the bus to the ticket office, buy your ticket, and then we look after your luggage. It goes back in an automated system and will be transported up to Merton. Yeah, right. It's like at the airport. It, it, a bit like that for the buses arriving for the cars, then there's there's an area where you can drop off and load up your luggage as well into um, trolleys. And then again, you wheel it over and check it in and it gets sent up to Moon. So there'll be, you won't see your luggage on the way up. It'll be underneath attached to the cable car going up and down. Um, did I read correctly somewhere that the that cableway from Steckelberg to Murren is going to be the steepest in the world? Yes, that's correct. It's going to be 159.4%, so almost 160%, which is why it's leaving the roof, through the roof, and goes straight up. Yeah. There's now two masts or two pylons. Um, one sticks out over the cliff, so it's built at an angle to make sure that the cableway goes up and round. And, and then there's a second one just bef- between the, the edge of the cliff and the Murren station. And it arrives again in a brand new building that's being built just now, which is uh, next to this current station and just opposite our Hotel Alpendru in Murren. On the 13th of December this year as well, we will be opening the first section of the Murren to Berg. Uh, the, the old section is also a pendulum. so. It, they both go or neither of them go. Uh, the new cableway is a new system called the Funny 4, and both of the new cableways going in there will be independent, which means that we can service and look after the maintenance of one while the other one runs. 
the the first section opens up in December, and the second sh- section will, will open up later on. The one disappointing news, but can't be changed, is that the cableway going from Bear to Shilton that will shut down on the 14th of October 2024 and reopens on the 15th of March 2025. So we're going to go through five months through the winter season of not having the shelter on accessible uh, except by by foot or by helicopter. Okay, so uh, people travelling from mid uh, mid October to March, they can only go as high as Berg Station. As Berg, yes. Okay, with the current system and with the new system, how frequently do the cable cars operate? Currently, the timetable is that we run the cable cars from the valley floor every half an hour, but at the moment we're running them every 15 minutes because we used to have a transport cable car that would take the luggage directly from Stechelberg up to Murren, which is no longer operating. So all of the supplies for Murren plus the luggage for the passengers has to go up and down with the passenger cable car, and that's making it a bit difficult. So so they're running every 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. The brand new cable car, I do not have the exact details yet about when everything will run. I can tell you that the second the second section from Murren to Berg will be opened on the 28th of November 2025. So it's going to take almost a year between the first one, Murren to Berg, and the second one. The opening of the first section will be the 14th of March 2025. So the, the day that the the Shilton reopens, it'll be with a brand new cable car going backwards and forwards. The ones from Moon to Berg and Berg to Shilton, these Funi for cable cars, they're, they're, they're made slightly differently in that the cables are slightly further apart than the current ones, or quite a bit. And the cable cars are much closer to the cables themselves, which means there's much more stability in wind. And these cable cars will take 100 people at a time. And all Six cable cars are being built at the moment to our specifications, so there won't be any other cable cars in the world that will look the same as these ones. Mm, okay, something very unique. So we've chatted about getting up to uh, to Murren to to start the the or to continue on to Shilthorn um, via the cable car from Steckelberg. But there is another way to reach Murren from the Lauterbrunnen Valley, also, isn't there? I know it's not part of the, the Shilton project, but I know a lot of people do like doing a, a kind of a, a round trip. So can you tell us a bit about uh, the alternative method of, of reaching Murren? For sure. We, I, I don't mind how people reach Murren because it's, it's definitely worth travelling to. The Swiss Travel Pass gives you free travel and buses, boats and trains in Switzerland. With the mountain trips, then there's different uh, discounts available, and some of them are 25% off, some of them are 50% off, and some of them are free of charge. The Swiss Travel Pass uh, gets you free access all the way up to Murren. So you can either take from Lauterbrunn and take the bus along the valley uh, and take the cable car up via Gimmelwald to Murren, and all of that's free of charge. The other way you can do is getting out the train station in Lauterbrunnen and you walk across the road where the bus is, but you go inside the station and inside the station there is a another uh, cable car system that takes you up to Grootschalp with the Jungfrau Railways and then from Grootschalp is a, a beautiful little train that takes you along to Murren. And they've been investing in this area too. And there's a 62, 63 million Swiss francs have just been invested in that train service, which means that people with um, mobility issues can travel without barriers all the way up and down to Murren. And it'll be both sides that way. Mm, fantastic. The train ride itself is very spectacular. So it's nice to do, yeah, go one way. To Murren via Grootschelp and and the train, and then the other way via the uh, the cable car. Both of the ways up to Murren will are completely barrier free, mm-hmm. so it doesn't matter if you're in a wheelchair, walking difficulties, whatever. We can get you up both ways and oh, down both ways, 
the one thing that I always point out to clients is that if you come up from Lauterbrunn via Grootjob and Moorden and you're going to the Schultorn, you have a one kilometre walk through the village, which is beautiful. However, if it's bad weather and it's raining, there are no buses, there are no taxis, you have to walk through the village. Yeah. So the, the the way of avoiding the rain on a bad day is to come up via the Schultorn uh, from Stichelberg and up. But it's a wonderful trip to do the, the round trip with the Schultorn included, yeah. for sure. So for people that are, are planning to visit the Schultorn uh, and they'd like to spend some time in Murren, either on the way up to the summit or on the way back, what are some of the things that they can do in Murren and, and, and what else should they see while they're there? The, the ticket going up and down from the valley to the Schultern, you can get out in Gimmelvald, you can get out in Moorden, you can get out in Berg, you can get out in the Schultern, and you can do that both ways. What I always advise is in, if you're coming in the morning, get up there early, especially if the weather's good. You can see it on the website using your phone uh, to check out the weather conditions, but often it's it's good in the morning, and slowly as the day moves on, there's some clouds come in. So that's why I would say get up there first. When you come back down, you've looked to Berg and you're in Murren. Murren's one kilometre long. There are about 10 hotels in Murren itself. And it's a beautiful little village just to walk around. We also have a funicular train, 112 years old going to be this year. And in a four-minute uh, funicular ride, it takes you through a tunnel to the Almentubel. Up there, we've got a lovely panorama restaurant with a children's play area. And I always recommend this to parents with young children. True holidays are sitting on the terrace enjoying a drink and watching your kids play in complete safety and getting rid of all that excess energy. And anyone who's a parent knows exactly what I'm talking about. And if you if you're fresh parent, then this is what's coming to you. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a few years and you'll see this is holidays pure sitting sitting together, watching the kids play in complete safety is just bliss. Uh, So that's what we offer up in there. And from there, there's some wonderful hiking. So there's plenty marked hiking routes so you can follow it back down to Moorn or back down to Grootschop or even go down to Stechelberg. There's plenty of ways uh, you can do the hiking there. There's also stunning views of Eigermünch and Jungfrau. From the walk along, there's a beautiful walk from Moorn out to Grootschop where the cable car from the Jungfrau Railways comes in. That's a stunning walk either, either way. You've got beautiful views whichever way you go. And Gimmelwald also has got the, uh, it's a little farmer's village with the cows out there. You can also walk up to in the summer to some of the places where they're making cheese. So you can, you can check it out in Winter Egg on the train between Moorn and Grootschalp. But you can also walk up to Schultel where they make cheese every day using uh, cows from the different farms in the area, but they do that collectively and have someone full time making the cheese every yeah. day through the, the summer season. And, and what about for those people who are visiting in winter? I guess being on a mountain, Murren is a, a great place to um, try some skiing. Yeah, the skiing is um, that's the reason I came to Murren in the first place was one, to get a job, but two, to do the, the main thing was trying to ski as much as I can. So we have 52 kilometres in the Moorland Shilturn area. There's also a ski school in the village. There's a lot of history to do with the skiing as well because in 1922, the first ever slalom was set by a British guy called Sir Arnold Lund and he put poles in the snow and timed people skiing it to improve their technique and making nice turns rather than just going flat out downhill. Uh, so the history is there, but it's got some wonderful skiing that's kept me more than satisfied for the last 34 years. But the ski pass also connects you down to the valley in Lauterbrunn and up on the other side, villages of Wenger and Grindelwald. So there's actually 220 kilometres of skiing there. So if you're coming for the winter, there's more than enough skiing in the area with some lovely restaurants dotted about, uh, incredible views. Just a great way to spend the winter days enjoying, and often above the cloud. So often the in the winter season, then uh, a lot of Switzerland's a bit in cloud, especially early in the morning, and sometimes might clear up, but sometimes doesn't. It just stays grey, 
and moor and, and shield turn and almond will tend to be above the, the cloud line and enjoying blue skies and sunshine. Mm, okay, that's that's very good to know. So for people that are visiting but aren't perhaps going skiing, um, they're just wanting to do an excursion from Interlaken or Lauterbrunnen or somewhere in the region, how long do you uh, suggest that they they allow for their visit to the Schiltorn? In winter and summer, you can get up to the Schiltorn in just over an hour from the Interlaken area. We're using the public transport or if you've got a hire car, you can drive up to Stecheberg and be up in almost in under an hour. So that's the timing. So you can do it as a half day experience. You could get up early, 7.25, get up the top at eight o'clock, have some breakfast, have a look around and you're, you're back in Interlaken before lunch. But I'd always recommend taking your time and getting out and enjoying it and turning it into a full day if you can afford it because there's so much to see and do. Now, I think a lot of our listeners are probably going to have limited time in the Jungfrau region, um, so they m- might only be able to choose one mountain excursion to do. Why should they choose to visit the Schultorn? The reason I would choose it, I, I, I still choose the Schultorn every day. It's a one, it's the it's incredible view and it's 360 degrees, so... Before the Shilton Cableway was built, people used to hike up there regularly just to take in the view because it's absolutely stunning. So that's why I'd always say go up there. And the other thing that we offer is that we take you to the peak and standing on top of a Swiss mountain is just an incredible feeling. And we're the only one that does it. Well, you've convinced me and you know personally, Alan, that I hate cable cars, but I've braved those cable cars and it is a fantastic experience. And I think the first time I be brave enough to to get to the top, I, I was just blown away by the spectacular views. So for anyone listening who is a little bit apprehensive like me and says, oh, I, I don't like cable cars, I encourage them to just to just to do it because you you won't regret it. Yeah, a, a fear of heights is 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 a thing that you some people have, and I I always feel for them because. I know it's a challenge, but if if you're if you're with a friend who's got a fear of heights, then get them in the middle of the cable car and ask them questions as they go up because it takes the mind off where they are. And once you get them up, they'll, they'll start to realise where they are. And it's just a case of not being cruel and not taking the mickey, just encouraging them to go places and, and get out of the comfort zone. It, it does everybody a power of good. So most people have got onto the skyline walk and thrill walk often as well, and they said they can't believe they can do it, but it's a case of just being giving them confidence and yeah. taking your time, and, and, and it's an experience you'll never forget, especially yeah. if, you, if you're if you challenged by heights. That's right. Well, I haven't been quite brave enough yet to get onto the thrill walk, but I have done the skyline walk, so, yeah, yeah one, one step at a time. We're, so we're getting there. That's right. Any last words Excellent. for our listeners, Alan? Just, um, yeah, if you can... Switzerland's a, a premium country, so it does cost a bit, but um, I'm sure you'll find value for money. It's an incredible place to come, especially the, the Lauterbrunn Valley and the, the Schiltorn areas. It's a beautiful place and it's kept me happy for the last 34 years. Save up and, and if you believe in it and you set your mind to it, you can come here and have a great time. Absolutely. Thanks very much for your time. Not at all. It's a pleasure. As I mentioned in my chat with Alan, the views from the Shiltorn summit are absolutely spectacular and are one of the reasons I love visiting this mountain so much. But you can incorporate so many other things into a visit to the Shiltorn that it makes this more than just an excursion to a mountaintop. The Berg Station, with its thrill walk and skyline walk, is well worth a look, and Murren is the most gorgeous village that deserves at least an hour's visit to wander around and soak up the ambience of this authentic, car-free Swiss village. Then there are the tiny hamlets of Gimmelwald, Winteregg and Grutschalp to explore, a funicular ride to Almenthubel to enjoy, and lots and lots of hiking trails, from easy to difficult. One of my favourite trails is the one between Murren and Grutschalp, as it offers the most spectacular views of the Eiger, Monk and Jungfrau. I'll add a couple of photos I took on this trail last year to the show notes so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. 
If you'd like to see views from the Shilthorn and learn more about Project 20XX, the video that I filmed with Alan last year is on the Holidays to Switzerland YouTube channel, and I'll include a link to that in the show notes too. You can also check out what we ate at our James Bond brunch and find links to purchase your Shilthorn tickets. Those show notes are at holidaystoswitzerland.com forward slash episode 93. Thank you for joining me today. If you enjoy the podcast, I'd be extremely grateful if you could leave a five-star rating or review on your favourite podcast app. And if you have a friend, family member or colleague who's planning a trip to Switzerland soon, please share the podcast with them too. Thanks so much. Until next time, tschüss. Thank <laughs> you.